So welcome to Techno Dad Life, and my name is Jeff. And so I'm probably you saw in the title, which I don't know what it is going to be. Uh, we're going to upgrade our storage with a Synology NAS. And so I'll give you a brief why I did it, and then in a few minutes uh, I'll, or a few seconds, I'll go over five reasons why most people would do it. So for myself, because I am a fiddler, you could say. And so because I fiddle, then I tend to destroy things. And so what I mean by that is like my servers and things like that, because I'm always trying new things, I always manage to break them. And then I need to redo everything. And so for me, I need consistent storage for uh, my videos and my photos and things like that. And so what I have is I have a Synology NAS now. It's a 920 plus, I think. I'll look in a second. And so that's what I put all that on, and, but I need a backup for it. And so what happened is I got a new Synology NAS. And so one I'm going to stick at my parents' house. And then the other one we're going to have here in... I got a 10 gigabit ethernet adapter. And so we're gonna see if I can, not today at least, but we're gonna stick this in. We're gonna see if we can, in the future, actually edit videos off of the Synology NAS. And again, that's for storage. I don't mess with that. So today, what we'll do is unpack it and get it all ready and go over, as I'm doing that, go over the pluses and minuses of having uh, a name brand NAS versus, you know, just building it yourself. For full disclosure, Synology didn't send me this NAS, but uh, they didn't ask to have the video gone over or anything in particular. So I'm free to say whatever I want. And so that's why we're gonna go over the pluses and the minuses of having one of these. So let's get started. So the first plus is you get an operating system that's super easy to use. Uh, it's DSM 7.1, I think, at this moment in time. And has a full suite of features, including data storage, which I am interested in, but also collaboration, multimedia, backup, surveillance, virtualization. virtualization. Uh, we'll get to multimedia a little later on the negative part. So next is it has storage flexibility. So this is the DS1522 plus, I'm pretty sure. Let me just make sure. Yeah, and so you can do different hard uh, RAID configurations, including RAID 5, RAID 6, and Synology's SRH, which is Synology Hybrid RAID, and that allows you to use different size drives, and it's supposed to offer faster RAID rebuilding. Next to plus you on the DS models, which are the desktop versions, you can use a wide variety of hard drives, including Synology's own, which I got two of in here. You can use Reds, Iron Wolves, you can use surveillance drives, uh, pretty much you can use any type of hard drive. On their server, or their server, their rack mounted, the RS line, uh, you're limited on the drives you can use, it, and they sort of make you buy the Synology ones, but there's another brand you can use, but I can't remember which one it is right now. These are what the Synology drives look like, and they sent two 4 terabyte ones, and then I have uh, two 4 terabyte uh, Iron Wolf drives that I just had laying around actually. So this one actually fits five drives, but I don't have uh, five four terabyte drives right now. 
So the server rails you just pull up. And you slide the hard drive in. And then hopefully it just goes right back in again. So the next benefit is you can add 10 gigabit ethernet and I will leave a little picture of however much this costs at the moment. Now the interesting thing is there's no directions how to put this in so. So we'll see what we need to do. And it looks like it should just slide in. So let's do that. And looks like that's about it. We won't know until we turn it on. And so this is a RJ45 port, so uh, uh, no SFP pluses or anything like that. And let's see, the fifth, the fifth reason why these are good is they use EEC memory or error correcting memory. Uh, so that offers enhanced security over regular memory, though it pretty much doesn't matter anymore. Uh, has eight gigabits to start out with, and it has two NVMe slots, so we can add some fast caching. And if, I just figured this out, but if you just bend these packages, it breaks, and then the uh, plastic part, oh, just comes out like that. I've always cut around them. Just a small tip. Hey, so five reasons uh, that you probably wouldn't want a NAS like this. So one is this particular model where all the other manufacturers and computers are going to 2.5 gigabit. This has uh, four ports, but they're all one gigabit and there's no 2.5 gigabit and the 10 gigabit adapter is pretty expensive. So the next thing to know about, so it does have NVMe drive bays, it has two, but the you can't use them as drives, it's only used for caching. But it does have these really neat clips, which I've showed in other videos where you just put it down and it clips in place without any screws. That I do like. So the third thing to be cautious about is the new CPUs that they put in. So they've switched almost their entire line to Ryzen CPUs, which is okay. Uh, except for they're not good for transcoding. So if you want to transcode, Ryzen chips aren't the best for transcoding. Uh, they do have one product in their line still that has a Intel chip that you can use for transcoding. And I'll put a link right here because I don't remember what it is. Now, 
The problem with these Ryzen things besides transcoding is it's only a dual core processor. And so besides not being good for multimedia, remember I mentioned that before, you can't transcode. Uh, if you're doing, if you're doing virtual machines, which is one of the things they advertise this for, it's very limited to that because you only have the two cores. So it's not really good for demanding applications uh, where you either have to do transcoding or, you know, use, have multiple cores or threads that you need to use. So another thing to be aware of is in the new version of Synology DSM-7, the ability to connect USB devices has decreased dramatically. So say you're running a Home Assistant or HomeBridge or something like that. Uh, you used to be able to plug in a USB adapter for either Zigbee or Z-Wave and you're not allowed to do that anymore. So the one thing about the cache drive, like I was saying, I don't think I said earlier though, it's just a cache drive. You can't use it for fast storage, but there is a script that's on Reddit, which I'll leave a link to if I can find it and I remember, that lets you use the cache drive actually for a fast drive. Mm -hmm. And then the last thing to be aware of, so the 10 gigabit ethernet adapter is uh, proprietary and there's no PCIe expansion besides this. So if you need some other expansion cards or have your own 10 gigabit ethernet card, it doesn't work, but it's in a nice small form factor for that. So what I can say is the uh, Synology DS1522 Plus, I don't know why it's plus, offers a lot of capacities, but it is not necessarily as flexible because Synology goes for a more Mac-like uh, in their configuration. So basically there's limited hardware things you can do and their software is designed to be more user-friendly. And so speaking of that, so in an upcoming video, I'll do how to do site to site backing up of Synology NAS and stay tuned for that or like and subscribe for that. And we'll see you next time. Bye bye.